Hi everyone, it's Justine. Welcome back on my channel. Have you noticed it's here already everywhere? The fall marketing machine. <laughs> Supermarkets are filling up with orange pumpkins, orange home accessories, orange costumes. And that made me wonder, like when did orange become the main color associated with fall? So I have decided to build a mood board dedicated to fall without using orange. So you will not see a pumpkin on my mood board. <laughs> aim points and to spice up the exercise even further I'd be using questions to fill that board. I'm gonna start right away so you can see what I mean. If fall was an element from nature then it would be a Japanese maple tree that has leaves which turn bright yellow in September and then vibrant red in October. It's an incredible color. If fall was a garment then it should be that cable knit long sleeve sweater very cozy and with some cashmere fibers in it if fall was a country then it should be scotland and the region of the highlands it smells like rain the ground is covered with moss and leaves and the skies get gray just before thunderstorms if fall was an architecture style then it would be gothic before the style disappeared. If four was a number, then it should be number six that rolls itself inwards to prepare for a cold winter. This number six is a vintage wooden letterpress element. If four was a material, then it should be this old wood used by the sun and washed out by salty seawater. If Paul was a man, then it should be James Franco reading or working at night in a cozy home with warm light. If Paul was a woman, then it should be Julia Roberts. Once the first has passed, the self-confidence remains, knowing who you are and a radiant, hot, warming smile. If Paul was a book, then it should be fiction taking place in another time, like in The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. Now, I have some white parts on my pictures and I really don't want that because white doesn't fit to the mood of the board I'm trying to create. So I'm going to take scissors, ruler, cutter and erase all the white parts everywhere. Once I have the elements I want, I organize them in a way that feels harmonious to me without white space. I may also bring elements together that create some kind of connection or generate an idea in my head. And I pay attention to the proportions and the placement of the pictures to avoid that one color dominates the others or that one picture dominates the other. My goal here is to give a feeling of fall, so I want the board overall to make sense and be harmonious. number six was getting a bit too much attention at the bottom of the mood board so I recut it and that's my final mood board for four. So you just saw my interpretation of fall and what it means to me. I'd be curious to see your answers to the questions I mentioned so if you do the same exercise and build your own mood board send it to me to the address here askjustinanything at gmail.com I'll give you feedback and I'll share it with the rest of our little community on this channel in a future video. 
And I mentioned before that mostly my research came from Pinterest. If you don't follow me on Pinterest yet, here is my name. So you can find me there and subscribe to my boards. Give this video a thumb up if you enjoyed it. I surely enjoyed making it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're interested in fashion and in creating things so you don't miss any of my future videos. I upload every Sunday, so at least once a week. Now, if you want to learn or relearn how to create a mood board, I recommend this tutorial up here. This one is a video, a different thing, from a couple of weeks ago where I show you poses, types of dresses, and demonstrate how to do quick sketching. So two completely different videos, but if you're in a creative mood right now, you might want to go on with those two. I see you next Sunday for a new video. And until then, keep creating. Bye.